With all of you trying to complete the model that I've challenged you to complete, I figured this would be a good time for me to try to complete a model. And I'm gonna do this using OnShape. So we're gonna do an OnShape tutorial. And this is a really cool model. And this is gonna be very much geared towards beginners, on shape users, beginning on shape users. I'm gonna review some of the fundamental steps that you would use to create a model like this. So if a 2D drawing was presented to you that looks something like this and you had to turn it into a 3D model using Onshape, how would you do it? Well, anytime we start a new 3D modeling challenge, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of come up with a game plan. And the first part of that game plan is what is my very first sketch going to be and where is my origin going to be? And the way we determine this is we look for the model to have symmetry. If the model has symmetry, like this model has symmetry in two directions, then your origin is almost certainly gonna be along the line of symmetry. And when you've got symmetry in two directions, that means the origin is almost certainly gonna be right here at the intersection of that symmetry. Now, the next thing that you ask yourself is, is there a clear footprint of the model like does the model clearly sit onto another device or onto a table in a in a very obvious way and in the case of this model it does this this face down here on the bottom this face right here this is like the foot of the of the model it's the bottom of the model and so that helps me to recognize that the origin is almost certainly going to be down here as well so now we've got our three different planes for our origin, our front, top, and right plane for the origin. And that's an important step because that's gonna help you figure out what the very first sketch is gonna look like and where the very first sketch is gonna be located. So once you figure out whether or not the model has symmetry and you figure out where the origin is gonna be, the next question is what's your very first feature gonna be and what sketch are you gonna use for that feature? And in the case of this model, you can make an argument to create this as the first sketch create this kind of shape like this, maybe apply some thickness to it, create a shape like that. That could certainly be your first sketch. But I think since this tutorial is geared towards beginners, I'm gonna follow a, a fundamental rule in learning 3D CAD, and that rule is keep your sketches simple. So my very first sketch is actually gonna be a simple, sharp rectangle centered on the origin right here on the top plane. And once I understand where my very first sketch is gonna be, then I can begin imagining what the remaining features of this model are gonna be. So the first feature is gonna be that rectangle. It's gonna get extruded up here at the thickness of this plate. The next feature is gonna be to create this kind of hump section that's going through the middle, these two half circles that are going through the middle of the model. Now, once I've got that geometry in place, maybe what I'll do is I'll create this kind of tombstone cutout, this kind of tombstone cutout here. And then I can finish up by creating this triangle triangular shape with this circular boss that's sticking out from that triangular shape. Some of this geometry I'm going to be able to mirror, like I could mirror this um, uh, tombstone cutout and I can mirror this triangular shape with the circular boss. So I'm going to take advantage of mirroring as well. And then I'm going to bring the whole thing home by creating this counter bore at the end of the model. This counter bore is centered on these radii. So I'll put in these four radii here. Then that's going to set me up with a mate connector that I can use to locate those counter bores. So before you start actually creating geometry in 3D CAD, it's a great idea to kind of come up with a game plan, to think about how the model's gonna be created, think about all the features, and then after you do that, you are ready to jump into your 3D modeling program. So today, we're gonna be using Onshape to create this 3D model. So here's my Onshape documents page. Let me take this, uh, this model here. I'm gonna use Windows Snipping Tool, and I'm gonna do a screen capture of the print. So just like what you're doing live during Model Monday Live, I'm going to take a screen capture of this print. I'm going to move over here into Onshape, and I'm going to choose to create a new document. Now, I am working in Onshape in the uh, free version in the public space here. So if you ever wanted to search Onshape in the public space for this document, 24-07-12-upper alignment clamp, then you will be able to find the document that I'm creating here, and that way you will be able to follow along with me. And it looks like in my uh, professional version of Onshape, I've set myself up for dark mode, but I haven't set it up here in this version. So I'm gonna go up here to my profile, up here in the upper right, go up here to my profile in the upper right. I'm gonna fly out this menu and I'm gonna say, view in dark mode. I could turn that on right now for this session, or I could go into my account, and then from my account, I can go to preferences and I can say dark mode. So here's dark mode and save theme. 
And oh yeah, look at that. Everything goes dark. And then I'm going to return to document. And there we go. Now I'm looking at this thing in dark mode and every new document that I start is going to be in dark mode. So this model is using MMGS as a unit. I'm going to click the little hamburger menu here. I'm going to go down to workspace units and just make sure that I'm using millimeter and I'm using gram. That is good. And now we are ready to follow through with our game plan. And our game plan here is going to be to start out with a rectangle on the top plane. So top plane, begin a sketch. You know what, just so that everyone can kind of follow along with what I'm doing, let me flip over here to the keyboard cam. There we go. Now you'll be able to see my hot keys as well. So I'm gonna go top plane, begin a sketch. So S key, begin a sketch. Then I'm gonna press N, that gets me normal too. Then S key, I'm gonna begin a center point rectangle. And then I'm gonna click here on the origin, move my mouse away and then click again. And then I'm gonna let go of my mouse. So you can see this is my mouse hand here. I'm gonna go over to the 10 key on my keyboard and I'm gonna type in 120, enter, 66, enter. And that's it for my first sketch. That first sketch is nice and fully defined or fully constrained. So that sketch is ready to go and turn into a solid feature. So I'm gonna press the S key again. Now, if you don't have extrude here on your S key menu, you can right mouse button and customize your S key menu and then you can add that extrude command. So I'm gonna say extrude. And then here, what I'm gonna do is this is a blind extrusion. And a lot of times when you first get started in, in uh, 3D modeling, your first extrusion is blind. So I can just press tab, tab, tab to advance down to the depth field. And then I can type in 13, enter, enter. And now I'm done, done with that first feature. So now that I've got that first feature in place, again, keep your sketches simple. Let's move on to the second feature. So I'm gonna pick this face here. I'm gonna S key, begin a sketch. Then I'm gonna press N to get normal two. And then I'm gonna press the S key again and jump into a circle command. Single click here on this uh, point, move my mouse out, single click again. And now let go of my mouse and that circle is gonna have a diameter of 31, which is the radius times two, enter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here, single click, move my mouse out, single click again, let go of my mouse, 18 times two and press enter. And then the final thing I'm gonna do here is I just want to create an explicit line across the bottom. I know you probably don't have to do this, but I think it'll help illustrate what we're doing with our contours. So I'm gonna click this lower line here, this lower edge, and then I'm gonna click this icon for use. And when I click this icon here for use, now what happens is that edge becomes part of my sketch. So it basically converts that edge into a sketch line. So now I'm ready to S key extrude and what I'm gonna extrude here is not gonna be the entire sketch. So to clear all these, these uh, selections here, you just press the space bar on your keyboard. So I press the space bar, now everything is cleared. Now I'll take my mouse out here and I'll click on this region. And for that extrusion, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an end condition here called up to face. And with up to face, I could click this face here. And now that extrusion is gonna go up to that face so that the depth of this extrusion will always match the depth of the rectangle. So we hit the check mark, there we go. And now we're gonna reuse that sketch. So this, this sketch over here, sketch two, I'm gonna show this sketch here and we're gonna reuse that sketch. And so what that means is when the sketch is shown like that, I could click on this circle here and then I could press the S key and choose extrude. And I can take that circle Let's make that a solid there. Let's try that again. We'll pick that circle or pick this region here. I can take that circle or I can take that region there and I can say remove. And for this one, the end condition is gonna be through all, through all. So solid, pick that region, remove, and that's gonna go through all. And so when I hit the check mark, there you go. You can see we were able to use that sketch twice, the same sketch twice to extrude that region. Now, I always think it's a great idea to rename your features. So over here in the tree, I'm gonna click this uh, main rectangle. I'm gonna press Shift N. That puts me into a rename and I'll call this main rectangle. And then I'll go down here. I'm gonna just click, click on that main rectangle again to unselect it. I'm gonna go down here. I'll do Shift N. I'll call this um, circ, uh, circ hump. It's kind of like a, I'll just call it bump actually. Circ bump. And then I'll click on that and then I'll take this one here, uh, extrude three, and I'll do shift N and I'll call that one cut, lower, circle. Something like that. You can call these features whatever you want, but you wanna make sure that you name them so that when you look at this model later, you can quickly jump through the tree to the feature that you want. 
So now I'm going to hide that sketch. I'll just click on the little eyeball here to hide that sketch. I don't need that sketch anymore. And now I'm going to move on to this kind of tombstone cutout shape. So I pick this face, S key, begin a sketch, N key, normal to, S key, line command. And now here's a workflow you definitely want to practice and get used to. I'm going to single click here on this edge, move my mouse over, single click again, move my mouse away from that endpoint. I'm going to come back and touch that endpoint. And then I'm going to come away again. And now what I'm creating is a tangent arc. And the workflow you want to practice is ending this tangent arc exactly vertical to where it started. So I'm going to drop this tangent arc here exactly vertical to where it started. And when I left click, now the radius of that arc is available to input. And so I'm going to input that radius 7, enter. And now I'm able to continue with a line command, come over and close off this tombstone shape. And that's a great workflow to learn because it means that you can create all of that geometry in one single pass. And so now all I need to do is just take the center point of this uh, tombstone shape and this plane here, make those coincident, the center plane. I press the letter I to make those coincident. And then S key, smart dimension, this is going to go from this edge to the tip of the arc here. And that's going to have a distance of 17. Now, sometimes we create features and we mirror the features, and sometimes we create sketch geometry and we mirror the sketch geometry. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to press the S key. I'm going to choose this line command, single click the origin, move my mouse, and I'm going to press Q. And you see what Q does is it changes that line to be a construction line. So Q, it's solid. Q, it's a construction line. And that means that I can then hit escape and just put a window around everything. And then I can click on the mirror sketch command here, and that mirrors that tombstone over to the other side. And so that means that now I can press the S key, extrude. This is going to be a remove, and it's going to once again be through all. So solid, remove, through all, hit the check mark, and there's those tombstone shapes. So now all I need to do is finish up by creating that triangle shape up top and then adding the counter bores. So to locate that triangle shape, it looks like there's a 40 millimeter dimension driven in across the center or driving across the center of the model. So I'm going to click on the front plane here, S key plane. So here's the plane command in my S key menu. And then I'm going to say that I want that to offset to a distance of 40 over two, since I'm only doing half of that distance, enter and enter. And now I've got a plane for that triangle shape. Pick this plane here, S key, begin a sketch. I'm going to press N to get normal two. And then we did this a little earlier. I'm going to click this arc here, and then I'm going to click use. And that way that arc becomes part of the sketch. So now there's like a sketched arc there that I can reference and add dimension uh, relationships to. Now I'm going to be S key, begin the line command, single click the arc, move my mouse up, single click again, come back, hold my mouse over the end point, come up and around. There's that nice line arc line workflow. Very useful. If you can, you could try to get horizontal. There we go. Horizontal. That'll be helpful too. single click. And now I'm going to let go of my mouse and type in the radius. And the radius for that is eight. And then I'm going to move my mouse down here like so. Just move it down here onto this arc so it's coincident. Single click. Then I'm going to hit escape. Then I'm going to click this line and this arc and press T on my keyboard to make them tangent. And then I'm going to click this point and this plane and press I to make them coincident. And then the final dimension I need to add is a dimension from the base plane to the center of that arc. And that dimension is going to be 45. And so once I've got that dimension in place, I could add some final sketching geometry here. So S key circle, and I can add a circle here that goes from this point to here. I could add another circle here if I wanted to uh, reuse that 10 millimeter through. So single click here, we'll make that 10. That's going to be for our through. And now it's just a matter of extruding this geometry. So S key extrude. By default, Onshape gets everything that I want. So I'm going to say that I want that to extrude to a depth of 11 millimeters. And there we go. And then for that final extrusion depth, we're going to reuse this circle sketch here, but we want that one to extrude out to a plane that is 70 millimeters from center offset in both directions. So we'll do again, front plane, S key plane, and we're going to uh, take this, press tab, tab, tab. If you want to advance through there, this is going to go to 70 over two. And that gives us a nice plane that's uh, that's all the way out here on the extent of our model, this plane here. And that means that we can go to this geometry here, this earlier sketch for S key extrude. And we can say that we don't want everything. So we press the space bar to clear everything. And we just want this region here. And where is that region going to go? It's going to go up to face. This time, instead of going up to a solid face, it's going to go right up here to this surface, to this plane. 
So we hit the check mark, and that gives us all that geometry. And now we can launch the mirror command at the feature level. So instead of doing it at the sketch level, we're going to do it at the feature level, mirror. And remember that up here at this flyout menu, you have to say features to mirror. So this is going to be a, a feature mirror. And the features are going to be, you can pick this face, and you can pick this face here for your mirror uh, features. Whoop, this face and this face here for your mirror features. And then your mirror plane is going to be this plane here. So you pick a, a face off of each feature that's being mirrored, and then you pick the plane to mirror about, hit the check mark. And there we go. This thing's looking pretty good. I think all we need to do now is press P on our keyboard. Maybe press Shift P, Shift P. If you want to hide everything, hide that sketch as well. Hide all the reference geometry. Fillet command. I'm going to press the tab key here to get down to my fillet radius, and that radius is going to be 13. And that fillet's going to get applied to this edge, this edge, and this edge and this edge and then finally we go to our hole command this is going to be a hole and this hole is going to be a counter bore so that counter bore the way this works in on shape is you could click here in this box for the the diameter of the counter bore and you could type in the desired diameter it's going to be seven and then you can press tab 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 then you can press 15 tab and then four tab so whatever's being called out on the on the print, you can use the tab key to quickly navigate through that box. And then finally, here where it says start points to place sketch holes, we're gonna click this icon here, selected mate connectors. And a mate connector is an entity that shows up at the center of any circular edge, it really shows up at the at the center of any edge. But because we've got these circular edges here on the, uh, on the filleted corners, the mate connectors line up in the perfect spot to make those counter bores concentric to our filleted corners. And so we give the model a final spin. Maybe we come down here to where it says part one and we say edit appearance and we could assign this kind of green color or even go into the mixer here and assign a green color, try and get it a little bit closer to what the customer uh, was working with. And then we can right mouse button on the name of the part. And from the right mouse button here, we can say assign material. And for our material here, we're going to go into the library that's called TTT Custom Materials, and we're going to choose the material from the title block, Plain Carbon Steel. And once we assign that material, we can click here on Mass Properties, display the Mass Properties, click on this part here, and we see that we're coming up with a mass of 918 grams for this part. So if I was in the... Uh, if I was in the uh, uh, competition, I would type that in, 918, enter, and let's go back to our PowerPoint here, and let's see if I got it correct. So we jump back into the PowerPoint here, and the correct answer is, oh yeah, 918 grams. So we did it, we did it correct, and uh, that is the way that you could model up that part in Onshape. Kind of a beginner's Onshape tutorial, but I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. And if you did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, leave me comments down below on that tutorial. Let me know what you thought about that. And that is kind of a cool beginner's on shape tutorial. Gets to show a lot of the different features. And so with that, let's jump back into our live competition here, our live 3D CAD eSports.